There's a new peer-reviewed study out. It was released the other day on February 25th, and it showed that the Pfizer vaccine integrated into the DNA of human liver cells in vitro. So in this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about this new data. We'll go over graphs and charts, and also some slides I created to simplify this for you. Before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Anyways, let's get into this. Now, I broke down this study in my new Substack post, so be sure to check it out. I'll post a link in the description below. It's really nuanced and simplified at the same time with a lot less medical jargon than this study itself. Now first, I'm going to give you a quick two minute overview of the study using my Substack post. Then, I'm going to open the slides that I created to explain things, and that way you'll have additional visual material. It should make things at least a little bit easier. Okay, first, let me pull up my Substack post on this. Hold on one second. Now let me scroll down to where it says the study numbers one and two. Let me highlight this. Now to begin, some housekeeping. Just so it's clear, the study we're talking about today was conducted because of curiosity over previous preclinical data from Pfizer and data from other studies showing transient damage from Pfizer's BNT162B2 COVID vaccine in animals and in vitro. So with that out of the way, let's dig into the data. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more because I want you to look here. So in this study, human hepatoma liver cells, also known as HUH7 cells, were exposed to the BNT162B2 vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine and monitored for changes at 6, 24, in 48 hours. For your information, HUH7 cells, the human liver cells that were surgically removed from a 57-year-old Japanese man in 1982. Interestingly, these cells are considered immortal because they continue to replicate. Um, they've been used in so many experiments since the 1980s that they're now considered a gold standard when doing this kind of research. Anyways, I digress. Let's quickly look at the next bullet point about PCR testing. So, after cells were exposed to the vaccine, as I explained, previously, their cell contents were broken apart and investigated for changes using quantitative PCR testing. So you guys already know what PCR testing is. Basically, RNA is changed or reverse transcribed into DNA, then amplified so a particular RNA DNA sequence can be identified. Well, what they found in this study after PCR examination, and let me scroll down to this stained image so you can actually get a visual, what they found is that the vaccine increased line one or for one proteins in the nucleus of human liver cells. Those kinds of proteins are associated with malignancy, especially increased levels of them. Also, researchers found that the ORF1 portion of the line one protein went back into the nucleus of the liver cells from the cytoplasm and other areas, and then chaperoned the attachment of vaccine RNA into human liver cell DNA. Okay, now look here at where it says letter A, the row that says line one. The box says CTRL or control. Now that signifies a control cell that wasn't exposed to the vaccine. The rest of the images in that row were exposed. As you can see, there's more red in the other boxes compared to the control. And more red means more line one ORF inside of liver cells. If you look below, the blue stain, also known as hook stain, identifies the nucleus or nuclear parts of those liver cells. Essentially, this is evidence that the red, which is line one protein, is within blue, which is the nucleus. Now let me pull up these slides so you can get a better visual of all of this. Okay, one second. Okay, slide one. So this shows what we already talked about. The vaccine was introduced into those HUH human liver cells, and then the vaccine mRNA used ribosomes in the cell to produce viral proteins. Now, let me pull up the next slide. Hold on one second. Now, as you can see, after 6, 24, and 48 hours, the cells were broken apart, and PCR testing was used to identify possible changes caused by the vaccine. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide, and that's slide three. This shows the results of the PCR testing. Essentially, it shows elevated levels of line one ORF1 proteins in the cell, plus the nucleus. We already talked about that, and obviously that's not good. Um, on the other hand, this image also shows elevated levels of vaccine mRNA and spike protein code. Now, that's normal. After all, that's what the vaccine does. Now, finally, slide four, and probably the most important one. Hold on one second. Let me pull this up. So, let me back up a little.
little bit to explain this properly. The vaccine was introduced to those HUH7 liver cells. That was the first step, right? Then the mRNA from that vaccine entered those cells. After that, mRNA from the vaccine made its way to cell ribosomes that then took the vaccine mRNA code and turned it into protein, specifically and incidentally, this line one ORF1 protein I keep talking about here. And if you look to the far right, you see the most insidious part about this, that being line one ORF1 protein after being produced in the cell ended up going back into the nucleus to chaperone the attachment of the vaccine code to the human DNA code in those liver cells. Now some final words on this. We really need more data on this to draw any conclusions. This was an in vitro study. This was not done in a fully functional organism. At best, it's interesting and educational. However, this does warrant follow-up and even in vivo studies for sure. Also, these cellular changes were seen after only six hours of those cells being exposed to the vaccine. But as far as 48 hours into the study, we only know 48 hours because that's when the study ended. The effects could have lasted for much longer. But anyways, those are the facts. We still need more data on this and if there's anything you'd like to learn about please leave it in the comments section below and I'll see you on the next one